Joining me for this CEO Spotlight is James Stewart, the CEO of MGM Growth Properties. James, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, MGM Growth Properties went public in April with a $1 billion IPO. What have been the main priorities for you and for the company since then? Since then, what we've really focused on doing is to try to prudently and sustainably grow our AFFO and our dividend. We're doing that through four major components of strategy. One, we have a guaranteed escalator on 100% of our lease, approximately 2% a year, and that uh, occurs annually. So that's the first form of uh, very straightforward growth. Secondly, we have a right of first offer on two spectacular new developments in process at MGM Resorts right now. The first is a development in National Harbor, very close to Washington, D.C., uh, which is going to cost about a billion four and be the best uh, gaming integrated resort on the East Coast. The second is in Springfield, Massachusetts, which will cost just under a billion dollars and also be a very nice, beautiful, uh, and great returning asset. The third component of growth really comes from our partner at MGM Resorts, which is uh, other assets that are not currently in our REIT, such as the Bellagio Hotel, the MGM Grand Hotel, uh, the joint ventures that they own, City Center, Elgin, Illinois, as well as projects of CapEx incurred by MGM, such as the Monte Carlo Theater, which is going to be completed this month, um, that we can also acquire uh, and uh, boost the AFFO and dividend. Lastly, there would be transactions with other third parties, and we have an active and very strong dialogue going on with a number of them. Now, what is the supply and demand outlook for gaming and leisure in Las Vegas over the next few years? Supply and demand dynamic is fantastic for existing operators. There has been on MGP properties, just the properties in our portfolio alone, almost a billion dollars of spending in the last five years. And when you look at strip wide, it's going to be a number that is much, much larger than that. All of that spending has been on things that will increase visitation but has not been on rooms. So we're looking at basically a flat to down room count versus the prior peak and um, multiple billions on uh, events and experiences that will drive visitation such as the convention space expansion at Mandalay Bay or T-Mobile Arena, the best arena in the world at present. Um, so as an existing operator, it's fantastic. We've surpassed the peak. Uh, by a good margin, which was previously set in 07, did so a couple of years ago. We're on this year, almost certainly going to get record visitation, and um, uh, I just think the sky's the limit for Las Vegas. And secondly, on the uh, supply front, there's really no good land on which someone can build a competitive integrated resort right now. And even if there was, and they had the capital put together, and they were about to put a shovel on the ground tomorrow, it would be three years or more before one of these things opens. So we see absolutely no meaningful uh, supply coming online and a lot of spending to drive visitation, so it's a really great dynamic. And lastly, looking at the acquisition market, how do you see that landscape in the near term? Who do you see as your main competitors? And is this uh, an area where we're seeing a lot of foreign capital coming in? We haven't seen too much foreign capital coming in, certainly compared to other real estate areas. Um, we have a healthy and active dialogue, I think, with many, many would-be um, uh, partners of ours. And I think that there is going to be an increasing number of transactions. Um, we don't have a great deal of competition. We have probably less than any other asset class. Um, the real competition that I see is just whether an existing owner is of the mind to sell into this environment or uh, wants to hang on a little more. James, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. For more from REIT World 2016, be sure to visit REIT.com.